which is why I kind of went to them in the first place. So if you don't mind, we'll wrap up the interview with some questions from them, because frankly, they're better at it than I am. (laughs) Uh, This is from Ali Shuttler, and Ali says, uh, Hello, Ben, I was wondering if you could ask Muse what pre-show preparations they do before they go on stage. Um, pre-show preparations, yeah, I kind of, I kind of pace around in circles quite a lot. I, I, um, I just breathe steam. I breathe steam all the time. Uh, I stick my head over like a hot bath and just breathe all like a hot. If, if you happen to have a nice bath in your dressing room, <laughs> <laughs> which you know, of course, we have a bath on the wider, and uh, and bre- just breathing in steam all day, and uh, you know, just chill out in the bath. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even bother, you know. Wow, just, uh, rock and roll, baby, rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, and there's no real ritual, I suppose. I mean, we we kind of. We're, we don't. We don't do the. We don't do the, like the big um, yeah, like to, to like to hug circle of hugs <laughs> and like you know. And come on, man, it's going to be a great show. We just kind of. I think. I suppose we're all quite nervous. I mean, I'm nervous every time I go on stage before I go on stage, and uh, so you're just trying to. You're just fighting with those nerves <laughs> for the last few minutes, and. Uh, oh. Sorry, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Fighting with the mic. See, he, he's nervous now. He just hit the microphone for God's yeah, sake. Yeah. Uh, this is from Amy Williamson. Amy says, "What's with the teddies? And will you be incorporating the teddies <laughs> into your live show? I hope to see some scary space alien teddies with lasers. Thank you." <laughs> now there's a good, a good set question. idea right there. Yeah, teddies. That's, oh, we didn't think of that, did we? Damn, teddy, giant teddy. That's a good one. See, I find it. teddies could could be quite scary. Um, yeah, yeah. You see, well, basically, we've got single the single artwork for uh, uprising, isn't it? Is uh, it's a bunch of teddies that are half buried, and you can't work out if they're sort of just coming out of the ground or, or if they're being buried. But it's like it's a little bit sinister, and I quite like the way pe- you know humans always project themselves into objects. You know, like especially like teddies or pets and things. Well, that's not an object, is it? Um, <laughs> I mean, things like a chair. You know, or something like if I don't a bit, like, chair. Ha- um, car or something, you know, like something that's got when you face. project your emotions into things, you know, they don't really actually have emotions. Like a teddy, is just obviously a piece. Of, so there are no te- fluff. there are no teddies in in the live show. Uh, well, there the might moment. there might be as of now. So Amy, if you go and see Muse, uh, make sure you then get your solicitor to uh, send them an email because it was uh, your idea about the teddies. Uh, this is from Niall. He says, uh, "I would like to know whether the band are revisiting some of their older material as we reach the tenth anniversary of their debut album Showbiz, especially before the homecoming gigs in Devon in a few weeks' time." Funny well, you should say funny that. Funny you should say that. There's one or two tracks that we have not played for probably eight or nine years, I'd say, so off the first album. We're gonna, we're not gonna, I'm not going to give it away, though, because it's a surprise for the night. But there's one, there's one or two songs that we're going to play that we haven't played for a very long time at the, t- at the Timothy concert. Uh, let's play some more music. This is track four. Uh, this, you know, we were kind of playing it. Uh, we thought it was going to be the first single. It wasn't the first single. It was just a good indication of where they were going with the album. United States of Eurasia. It is Muse on Absolute Radio. Right, we're back with more questions from you, the fans, for Matt and Dom. Dear Matt and Dom, uh, when making The Resistance, uh, were there any unorthodox ideas that you had for the album that you wanted to put in but, but, but decided were too bizarre? And this is from Tasha, who is uh, also known as Origin of Gemini from South Yorkshire. Well, when we were recording the sound effects for the end of Eurasia, we wanted to record a whole lot of things, but we didn't get around to it. I think we recorded one plane going <laughs> over the ending, which you probably just heard, actually, if you just played that track. And we recorded some kids playing in there. Well, actually, Paul recorded them, didn't he? Paul, we recorded them. Uh, but we wanted to record loads of sort of sounds of warfare, so we wanted to go we wanted to go out into the Middle East and record some sound of war. And uh, I think that wasn't really a good idea. Uh, yeah, so I think Warners went, <laughs> I think not. Uh, no, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> definitely not going to happen. Um, there's, I, you know, I think we generally like to put as much as we can on the tracks, and we normally end up like deleting things and taking things away, you know. So we get quite ambitious with what we put on. I think I tried to put a gong on every single track on the album, but you know, it got deleted by a few members of the band. <laughs> sure, on, sure. but it did make it on um, a couple of tracks. It's in there on um, Eurasia, actually, and I belong to you. Finally, a gong on the album. I think the, that. the one question that uh, when I put this sort of post up on on the Muse website for questions, the one question that I got more than any other question was, why no B sides? Why no B sides? Um, there, there are a couple, um, but they're, they're not finished yet, are they? There's a couple that we haven't mixed them or something. Uh, there's a couple of sort of, we did a couple of covers, um, bits and pieces. But yeah, we didn't. We didn't. We basically we finished the album. We didn't have time to do anything else because we were mixing, and then we were straight on to doing things like artwork and all that. So, we, but we have recorded a couple of bits. So I'm pretty sure the next single will have some B sides. Yeah, the first one though, we didn't have time to get anything done because we were so up against it with uh, getting the album done in time to uh, get it. Uh, sort of the artwork done. I don't yeah, know but, but you know, I think once we started working on the songs as well that ended up being on the album. I think we, you know, we we quickly kind of decided what we thought would be on the album and really wanted just to work on those and, and not spend too much time like recording loads and loads of tracks that don't really get realised correctly or just get left in, you know, in the computer somewhere. 
So we just wanted to choose the tracks that we knew were going to make it, choose the best stuff, I suppose, and then just work with that. Uh, this is from Sophie. Sophie says, uh, Dom has played gigs dressed as Spider-Man. I have a Spider-Man outfit as well. Everyone needs which, him. Which I love. Yeah. And uh, and you uploaded, I think, Twitter pictures of uh, Chris dressed as Captain America. So I think a lot of people are asking, Matt, when are you going to dress up? And the suggestions from the website are... Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, yeah, that would be my first choice, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the leotard again. I'm quite comfortable in the leotard. <laughs> I'm seeing a routine here. I'm seeing some kind yeah, of pattern. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. There. I like those boots as well and, and the headpiece. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice look. So there is no, uh, there is no plan to. Uh... There's no plan, yeah, but it's true. I'm due, I'm due a costume. I know that much. But okay. one, yeah, so Wonder Woman, I'll, I'll do it. And finally, I mean, this is my favourite question that we've had from the fans, and you know, they see things that you, I, other members of, of, of yeah. the camp will never see. <laughs> this is superb. Hello, Ben. I reckon this question should finally get an answer as it's been a great source of amusement for us fans for a good while now. As we all know... I didn't know this. But as we all know, the clapping in Starlight spells out tits in Morse code. Was this an intentional plan to make the full arenas of fans unknowingly proclaim their love of boobs or just a coincidence that adds a wonderfully funny layer to the song? From Rosa <laughs> in <laughs> Finland. Well, of course it was intentional. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was all planned. <laughs> These things were all planned, yeah. I mean, the hope was that, you know, everyone's going to clap along to the concert and, you know, get the message that we're actually trying to... <laughs> Just, just get, yeah. Just, just everyone take, it, just, general, everyone take yeah. a shirt off and just, just, just get comfortable yeah, yeah. and relax. How, and, how do they know that? <laughs> I mean, I know you're a band who likes multi layers and hidden messages here, there, and everywhere. But seriously. Yeah. You've got to love the fans. That you? is amazing. That is amazing. Thank, thank you very much for answering those questions and, and my even more ridiculous ones. I, I appreciate the time. Um, can you pick one track from the album that we haven't played yet? Because we kind of played half. You played the first half, yeah? Yeah, we, right? play, we played the first half, yeah. Uh, one track from the album that we haven't played yet. Uh, you can tell us a little bit about it uh, and then we'll get it on. We could play I Belong to You or we could get real deep and just play the whole of the symphony. Well, that's 12 that's minutes of airtime, though. Though. That's 12 like, minutes I'm not sure where we can do that on Absolute Radio. Yeah, yeah. Are you seriously? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's yeah. Me Are you sure, you sure you won't think people might think it's classic FM and turn over? Do you know what? If they think it's classic FM, then they need to clear out their ears. So, uh, Exo Genesis, uh, before we go, and I'm, I'm being told you've got to go, tell me... Uh, if you can, about this record. I know it's 12 minutes in, in, in length, but it's a record that you've been working on for quite some time. Oh, the ending, the three parts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, almost like an imaginary soundtrack to an imaginary sort of short sci-fi film <laughs> about, um, about kind of like the first part is kind of the idea of like, civilization coming towards its end and then, and then part two is like a bunch of astronauts disappearing to like the space to try and find another planet and then part three is they find another planet arrive. It's, it's that kind of idea that life is something that just moves from planet to planet over the course of, you know, the millennia and all that, or billions of years, what do you call it? eras over the eras and um so yeah it's kind of plays that idea really musically it's uh, yeah obviously very classically influenced and uh, a lot of sort of uh, strings and uh, ar- arrangements and trying to incorporate the sort of classical sound mixed mixed with how we sound yeah. it's really trying to sort of find that middle point that um fusion if you like well listen thank you so much for coming in thank great you. to sit down and talk to you thank you for yes. answering the questions and best of luck with the album although we all know it's going to be huge and we look forward to uh, the homecoming shows as well cool. thank, thank you for much. your time cheers. thank you cheers, cheers. excellent